What up, welcome back. Today's gonna be another practice vlog video. Goaded snack. Where you're gonna learn the top three things that you must do in your golf swing in order to hit the ball more consistently. Super slow. Now, I don't care if you're a beginner golfer or on the PGA Tour, this is something that anyone could do and can apply to anyone's golf game out there. The three most important keys to your golf swing are your grip, your posture, and your alignment. We're gonna go over each of those in this video, but if you're sitting there and thinking, oh, I already know how to grip the club, I already know how to step to the club, I don't need this video. Trust me, after playing competitively for 22 plus years, you definitely need this video. For the main reason is, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I made very early on. And it took me thousands of lessons, spending thousands of dollars working with the top coaches like David Leber and Butch Harmon to finally realize my mistake. So this is gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money. When I was playing Division One golf or very early on in my professional career, whenever I would play bad, I would immediately go to the range and work on my golf swing. Grab a buddy, have him take a video, and self-diagnose it pretty much. Or even worse, search on the internet for like the next shiny toy to try to fix my golf swing. Kind of ironic how we're on the internet right now trying to fix our golf swing, but trust me, this will actually help you in the long run. Your swing isn't really gonna change from day to day or even month to month. What might change is your grip, your posture, and your alignment. It's funny, whenever I would take lessons from like the best, the best coaches, that's what they would focus on first. And then they would look at the swing. So you gotta look at the fundamentals, diagnose those first, figure out what you need to fix, what you need to adjust, and then at last case scenario, last outlet, you work on your swing. A change to any of these three fundamentals kind of acts like a butterfly effect and subconsciously puts yourself in unnecessary positions in your golf swing in order to hit the ball. But why is this, right? Well, at the end of the day, we are all athletes and whatever position we start ourselves in, we're gonna find a way to hit the golf ball no matter what. And that goes with the golf swing too. However, if we can perform daily maintenance on these three specific fundamentals, we could be able to hit the ball consistently over a longer period of time and thus predict and plan and strategize our shots more consistently and in turn, shoot a lot lower scores. So I really hope you now understand how and why this all interrelates. All right, let's get into it. Now, before I forget, if you're a fan of my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now let's go golfing. So freaking gas. Gas emojis in the comments. Do it now if you're a fan of these. So we're starting with the most basic one here and then we're gonna get to the exciting stuff. Number one is the grip. Believe it or not, how we grip the club has a direct correlation on how we swing the club. To get started here, you're gonna wanna grip the club in your fingers like this and then wrap your palms around the top of the golf club. And then you could either interlock, overlap, or 10 finger grip. I've seen a lot of good players do all three, but a good way to think about it is if you have big hands, then you probably wanna go with the overlap grip like what I do. I have size XL gloves, like humble brag I know, right? So meaning your pinky finger just relaxes right over your left index finger. And if you have small hands like Tiger Woods or Jack Nicholas, you're probably gonna wanna interlock your grip like this. After you learn how to grip it, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. Like, do you have a neutral, strong, or weak grip? I like to have a very neutral grip, meaning these two Vs, whenever I grip the golf club, between my thumb and my index finger, those point to my right shoulder right there. And I generally could see two knuckles with my left hand and two knuckles with my right hand. If you like to grip the club strong, that just means that you like to see more than two knuckles with your left hand and weak just means less than two knuckles. And if you're a beginner golfer, I suggest you start with a neutral grip and then we can tinker stuff around a little bit. So when you are messing around with your grip, there are two swing positions that you need to pay attention to in order to kind of justify that change. So you're gonna look at your top position and then you're gonna look at impact. If your club face is a little open at top and open at impact, I suggest you strengthen your grip a little bit. So meaning you just, you would see one more knuckle on your left hand right there for all my right hand golfers. Left, lefties would be the opposite. So by strengthening that grip, it's actually going to square the club face up top and help you square it at impact. And vice versa, if your club face is closed at impact, then I would weaken that grip a little bit. And if it's closed at top, causing a closed club face at impact, I would also weaken it. So those are two things that you just need to keep in mind. And that also brings me to a good point too. Like if you compete uh, in tournaments and whatnot, if you're a junior golfer, a college golfer, if you're kind of seeing the ball go a little bit right consistently, you don't really know what's causing it, I would strengthen your grip a little bit. Like I'm not saying it is completely foolproof. It works for me. And especially if you're on the golf course, you don't really want to have too many swing thoughts. You just want to have like a, like a little fix that uh, you could just do 
on the golf course that would automatically kind of strain out that ball flight. Definitely, definitely recommend trying this before um, implementing it in, in an actual tournament, but uh, it helps me a lot, so it might help you too. All right, the second most important thing that influences your golf swing and could potentially lead to bad scores is your posture. I like to check my posture every time I take like a long break or if I'm traveling, my body might not feel right. So I do this simple drill on the golf course right before I hit balls. It takes like five minutes. It's so easy and it'll help you guys a lot. So basically you stand up straight and pretend like you're leaning over to like view the edge of a cliff. And as soon as you feel like you're about to fall in your face, just bend your knees a little bit and you should feel all your weight basically on the ball of your feet, which is this part of your shoe right here. Basically, if you sit up to the golf ball and feel like you're on your toes, but at the same time you can lift up your toes and wiggle them around a little bit, that is the ball of your feet right there. So that, that meaty part of your foot. The reason why we like to have the weight on our balls of our feet, because if we get the weight too much on the heels, our lower body is too stagnant and it's very, very hard to pivot around our body all throughout the golf swing properly. Plus for me, for example, whenever I get the weight too much on my heels, I find my plane gets really, really flat. So if I get too much like around me, I know for a fact my weight is too much on my heels and I need to get a little bit more on the balls of my feet there. And vice versa, if you're on your toes, you feel very imbalanced and it's very easy to get the club really, really steep in your backswing and downswing. Honestly guys, just checking your posture for like five minutes every time you get to the range or the golf course will save you a lot of strokes and help you lower your scores. But lastly, and most important, is our alignment. Unlike your grip and posture, your alignment has way more of a correlation between your ball flight, which is actually what we should be striving to get better. Having bad alignment might cause you to hook it or slice it, but will definitely, definitely lead to frustrating rounds. Because if you're like me at the end of the day, and you play really, really bad and you look back on your round and you realize it was just your alignment that was at fault and not anything in your golf swing, you're gonna be pretty frustrated because generally you go to the range and you spend three hours after the round trying to fix something that's not actually broken, whether or whereas you could have just spent five or 10 minutes on the range working on your alignment and would have saved you a lot of pain, a lot of misery and saved you a lot of strokes. I've definitely had many rounds like on the golf course in tournaments with my buddies that I was hitting the ball so bad on the golf course and just this little thing like my alignment caused me to kind of retroactively hit bad golf shots and have a bad result because we are all athletes. And funny thing, if we all aim 10 yards to the right every single time consistently, our body is just gonna naturally compensate and pull over the top and try to come back on our target line. Lucky for you guys, I came up with a foolproof system to help you guys consistently step to the ball way better over a longer period of time. It's called the two-step method. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna sit up to the ball with your feet together and having the ball right in the middle of your stance. And then take a baby step with your left foot or lead foot, and then take a little bit bigger step with your right foot or trail foot. And depending on the club that you're gonna hit, that determines the length of the step you take with your trail foot or your right foot for my righties out there. Smaller step with my wedges and short irons, and a little bit bigger set with my lawn irons and woods. Unfortunately, I did not come up with that method. I wish I did. I'd be way more successful as a golfer and way more rich. I did copy it, however, from Ben Hogan out of his book, basically the golf Bible, Ben Hogan's Five Lessons of Golf. If you guys haven't read it and studied it from cover to cover, I highly suggest you do so. If you are unaware on how wide or narrow your stance actually should be, fortunately, there is a training aid that I found recently that'll help you out a lot. And that is called Stance Caddy. We're about to get into it right here, but this is very, very cool training aid. I use it a lot. A lot of beginners use it. Professional golfers use it. It is very, very good. It'll help you set up to the ball way more consistently. Basically, you're just gonna unfold it like this. And then we're gonna measure our shoulders. This is what's pretty cool about this training aid, guys. It's totally customizable depending on the golfer. Like what is my perfect stance might not be your exact perfect stance. So. That's why we measure our shoulders right here and this is gonna give us our own personalized perfect stance. So mine is about 16, I measured it earlier. I suggest getting a buddy to do this too. So mine's about 16 and a quarter right there. So then after I got my measurements, I'm gonna transform this training aid yet again, move this down to where the ball has an arrow on the top of it and is pointing upwards. And then we're gonna swing this around to where the foot is just in line with where your foot would actually be. So we put this down parallel to where our target line would be and have the ball in line with this big line in the middle here. 
and sit up feet together just like we did earlier. Set my left foot out in line with the left foot placement on there and set my right foot out to where, so this is a six iron right here. So I'm gonna place it in between where it says seven iron and five iron. And this is my perfect stance right here, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. That's it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and show Stance Caddy some love. It is an awesome training tool. I use it every single day. If it's helped my game, then it probably will help yours as well. So go check it out. See you next time.